All right, ladies draw preview at the 2022 Wimbledon Championships. It's that time of the year, the top of the calendar season, as you would say, the peak moment, Wimbledon. And we have Iga Sviantek coming in on a 35 match win streak, six titles in a row, but this is her first title on grass. So I'm trying to figure out, is the big story is she gonna be stopped like it was at Roland Garros? Or is Serena Williams' return to tennis a bigger story? Regardless, we're gonna take a look at those stories and break down the draws of Ega, take a look at Serena's path, who's she playing in the first round, look at you know some of the dark horses, and just wrap up this ladies' draw as we head into the first day of action tomorrow. Let's get into it here on The Slice, presented by Points Bet Canada. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the Slices coverage of the 2022 Wimbledon Championships, as I mentioned by Points Bet Canada, our presenting sponsor. I got the Wimbledon memorabilia behind me. You can see it there. We got the grass, we got the clay, we got the slice, and we got everything you need to know about the ladies' draw here at the championships. As I mentioned, Iga Sviantek, not as big of a favorite, uh, according to the odds, but also according to the eyeball test, um, as she was on all the clay tournaments basically, just absolutely running the board there. Anyone she played, she won, it's been crazy, we know that. Uh, Serena Will Williams is back, kind of last minute decision, took the tennis world by surprise. We got Ans Jabur uh, winning Berlin uh, last week, so looking very good and confident on the grass. So we're gonna take a look at those draws. Let's first take a look at the odds by Points Bet Canada. Um, and if you're a betting person and you live in Ontario, here's some tips for you that you can use on this points bet. I'll give you my three picks, but the top five odds maker favorites to win Wimbledon on the women's side is Iga Shrontek at 2.6 to one. So a lot higher than at the French. Uh, then we got Anne Chabur, number two at 8.5. Coco Goff next at 12, uh, which is crazy, 18 year old, but she made like the fourth round, I think of Wimbledon at 15. So anything can happen. Uh, Petra Kvitova just won a tournament last week, um, 15 to one, and then Simona Halep, 17 to one. If I was gonna pick, say I had five units uh, to put down on there, I would put, I think, two units on Iga, because 2.6 for Iga to win is pretty good, and she's done a lot of winning, but it's only grass, so that's why, we, that's why it's a risk. Uh, two units on Ons, I think she's gonna be serious contender. She's on the bottom half of this draw, uh, away from, Shiron Tech, um, so she's got a decent chance. And then I would put one unit on Bianca Andrescu at 29 to one, almost 30 to one, uh, because she's playing very well on the grass. She's won a Grand Slam before, and she made the final just last week in Bad Homburg, and she's looking very good, in my opinion, following her very closely. So there's some free tips for you. Thank you guys for watching along. Make sure you subscribe and stay around to the end of the video to see my predictions for this tournament. Potential quarterfinals. What I like to do, if you've never watched one of my draw previews, what I like to do is kind of break up, tell you who the seeds are, explain where they are in the draw, and then we'll get a bit deeper into who else is in the quarter. We'll do this all together, I think, for this one, because I like how it's laid out. The potential quarterfinals are Sviantek versus Pagula uh, on the top, and then the second quarter, Bedosa versus Pliskova, and then on the bottom first half, it, or first quarter, is Collins versus Jabur, and then Sakari versus Contivate on the bottom. In that top draw of Sviantek versus Pagula, potentially, we got some really good players in there. We got Krajikova, so she's won a slam before, and she's in the she's in Sviantek's fourth or eight or you know sixteenth, so she could play her in the fourth round. So that would be super interesting. We got Muguruza in there as well, and then we got Bianca Andreescu, Canadian, uh, in there as well. So that's a pretty talent-packed, firepower-packed top quarter, if you ask me. So not the simplest for Sviantek. Uh, in the Bedosa quarter, we got Plisko, as I already said, and then we got Halep uh, on the, and the Bed could play Bedosa in the fourth round, and then Coco Goff could play Pliskova in the fourth round as well, but she might actually play Serena Williams because Serena Williams is in that quarter as well. Dark Horse, uh, just saw it off the top of my head, absolutely burying Patrick Moratigo, her former coach and former boyfriend. Um, saying she was asked about it you know how is it going to be playing you know with, with Patrick not in your team with Simona and he she just went oh I actually haven't really thought about it just absolutely giving a little jab there so a little bit of extra drama here with Serena always the case and we love it so 
that's the top half, I would say, is like pretty action-packed and talent-packed. Top half with Hal Goff, Serena Williams, Andrescu, Muguruza, Krajikova, Pagula, and Sviantek, and Bedosa and Pilaiskova, obviously. So just great top half there. Second half, third quarter, uh, Collins and Jabur has Raducanu at number 10, the 10th seed, versus and also Ker Kerber at number 15. So that's a good quarter. They're all good quarters, obviously. We've got the entire women's tour here. Uh, and then Sakri Contivate quarter, Ostapenko 12, and Benchich 14. So I think that quarter, that last quarter, is the most open one, I would say, uh, for players maybe to make a move, make a run. Uh, a lot of unknowns there. Ostapenko and Benchich could come out of it. Sakri Contivate could. There's a lot open in that bottom fourth quarter, I think. So the big storyline, though, is Iga Sviantek, 35 matches, one straight. Let's take a look at her potential route to the championship if she were to win Wimbledon, which would be crazy. Um, let's, Serena, so, yeah, so her first round would be, is playing Fett, and then Kovincic, Kovinic in the second round, and then either Korne or Putinseva in the third round, uh, and then it starts to get a little difficult, possibly Krajikova in the fourth round, and then at quarterfinals, Pagula, semifinals, Badoza, or finals, Contivate or Ons Jabur, which I personally think it would be Ons Jabur, um, because of the way she's been playing, like I said, in Berlin, winning it. I was in Berlin and I asked her at the beginning, I said, how do you like the grass change from clay? And she says she, you know, the, the change was always hard, but she personally loves the grass with her, uh, her ability to change things up, her like drop shots, her like different spins and paces she puts on the ball. She feels comfort, comfortable out there and she feels it's important to use those weapons even more on grass than she said on clay, which I thought was interesting. If you remember, last year, the woman who took out Ega Svantec last year, who was not playing at the level she is now, let's make that clear, that was Anja Burt, beat her, I think, in the fourth round. So Anja Burt is the last person to beat Svantec on grass. So luckily for Svantec, maybe they're on opposite sides um, of the draw, but I think that would be the most juicy final we could hope for uh, in the final if they both got to the final, but there is a lot of question marks, I think, because... With Sviantec, literally the story for all the WT event, A events on the clay leading up to, to Ron Garros was, was she going to lose? The answer was no, she wasn't going to lose. And this feels like there's a lot more opportunity for her to lose because her game is not as confident on grass as it is as clay. That still means it's extremely confident, extremely potent. She has all the tools to do well, but there's just more questions like we don't know. So... We're going to find out. That's the whole point of being here. So I'm very interested to see that. Quick look at the first round opponents for some of the other big names that I follow. Serena Williams versus Harmony Tan of France, number 113 in the world. You know, could have been a worse start for Serena, I think, as far as getting back into the swing of things. But really, how do, how do you guys think she will go? I personally don't see her getting out of the fourth round. Like I don't, I, it would kind of surprise me if she got past the fourth round. She'd be playing probably Coco Goff or, um, or, or uh, Pliskova there. And, you know, there's just young players, younger players. We just don't know where her fitness is at, her, where her movement's at. Um, so it'll be a big question mark. But it'll be another opportunity for Serena Williams to prove her dominance and her goatness at a tournament where she's just kind of come out of retirement almost to play. So that's super interesting. Emma Raducanu, the Queen of Britain. Princess of Britain, Van Uytvank from Belgium. A kind of a veteran player, number 46 in the world. Just won an ITF 250, so playing very well, apparently. And the pressure that's on Emma Raducanu, she says, oh my, I don't feel it. Um, yeah, everyone feels it. Nobody is immune to pressure, and nobody probably has more pressure on them than Emma Raducanu at Wimbledon this year. Fair or not, that's just how it is. And that's gonna be a danger match in round one. Imagine if she goes out in round one. Imagine what the crazy Brit journalists are going to say. So that's a danger match to watch as well. And we got our Canadian princess, queen, the queen of Canada, Andrescu versus Emina Bektas from the U.S., number 85. I don't think this should be an issue. I think uh, Bianca is super motivated after losing in the final of Bad Homburg, where she was up in the second and third sets. Um, she felt like she probably should have won that that match as well. She should have won the match in Berlin that she lost to Pliskova. So she's coming in with a lot of motion and or motivation and a lot of confidence on grass, as she should. She's been playing well, and I think, like I've said multiple times, her game suits the grass very 
well. So my prediction, I'm, I got a good feeling about Anjabur in this title, in this tournament. I think Anjabur is my pick to win it. Obviously that's pretty far out there, but like me, if you are gonna put your money where your mouth is, you can bet on Anjabur for 8.5 times your money on points bet Canada. A um, little bit out there, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a big far shot call at all because Ons is great on the grass, but that would mean that Sviantek's 35 match, whatever it is then match winning streak will come to an end. And I think that is gonna happen at Wimbledon this year. I think Sviantek run comes to an end. It's just too long to be dominant, isn't it? To change surfaces as well. And Ons Jabur is my pick to win. So let me know what you guys think about that. Let me know what you think about the draw where it's laid out. Interesting stuff. We'll see you guys on our coverage continuing of Wimbledon presented by PointsBet Canada. Thanks for being here. Subscribe and like this video and we will see you guys soon.